Hey everyone, I'm Ian Norman from Lonely Spec, and today I want to talk about a way to make medium format astrophotos by using a method of panorama stitching. For this demonstration, I'll show you how I made this photograph of my girlfriend Diana standing under the Milky Way at Trona Pinnacles, California. This photo became one of my most popular images on 500px when it was released. And what might not be immediately apparent is that it was made by stitching together multiple photos from a 50mm lens to give the photo a medium format look. Single focal length prime lenses in the 30 to 60mm range are usually some of the best lenses that you can buy for your camera. They offer a neutral field of view that's not too wide or narrow, and they offer excellent image quality and fast apertures for low light conditions. They can also be very affordable compared to most other lenses. This Canon 50mm f1.8 lens, for example, can be found online for less than 100 bucks. Now using a 50mm lens for landscape astrophotography presents a problem. Even on a full frame camera, the field of view of the lens is only about 45 degrees. The Milky Way takes up a huge portion of the sky, so a 50mm lens only lets us see a small portion of the Milky Way. For this reason, I usually prefer to use a wide-angle lens like a 24mm, which lets us capture a larger portion of the sky. So in order to work with a 50mm lens, I combine a bunch of exposures into a panorama to give us a larger view of the sky, and that's the technique I'll show you here. It's a little more work than shooting a single exposure with a wide-angle lens, but the results can be excellent. So for the demo, I used a Sony a7S mounted with a 50mm lens. I shot everything in RAW, and I'll be processing everything in Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Lightroom. When trying to make an exposure of the Milky Way with a standard lens, I usually recommend an exposure of about 10 seconds at f2.8 and ISO 6400. 10 seconds will allow us to collect enough light, but should also be short enough to prevent the stars from streaking across the sky as the Earth rotates. To learn more about exposure settings for shooting the Milky Way, you can check out LonelySpec.com for an easy-to-use calculator and some more detailed tutorials on astrophotography. So with the exposure set, I mounted the camera on a tripod with the camera oriented vertically. I checked my focus and I shot two rows of images, one at a time, making sure that there was at least 50% overlap on all of the photographs. Now if this is your first time shooting an astrophoto panorama, I recommend that you start out by shooting only a two row panorama at the most, with no more than 10 frames maximum. Now let's import these photos into Lightroom and take a look at them. You can see that the lens still has some noticeable aberration at the corners, but luckily stopping down a bit kept the center of the images nice and sharp. Stitching is nice because it allows us to use mostly just the center of the image with the details the sharpest. You can see that all of the photos have really good fine detail in the center of the image. Alright, let's stitch all of these things together. I'm just going to select the first image here, hold down the shift key, and select the last image to select all of them. Then I can right click and select Edit In and choose Merge to Panorama in Photoshop. Once we get into Photoshop, we'll be greeted with this Photo Merge dialog box. It'll have a list of all the photos you selected, and there's a few settings that we want to check. We'll use the Auto Layout type, and we'll have Photoshop automatically blend the images together. And finally, we'll have Photoshop remove any vignetting in the images that might affect the stitch. Once we're ready, we can click OK and sit back while Photoshop processes the stitch. Sometimes this can take a little time, so be patient while it works away. When it's finished, you should get a final stitched image already blended together. There are a few last tweaks I want to make in Photoshop before we return to Lightroom. First, I'll combine all the layers together by selecting the Options dropdown in the Layers palette, and I'll select Flatten Image. Next, I want to remove some of the trapezoid shape of the stitch by going to the Lens Corrections tool under Filter and Lens Corrections. And once it's loaded, I'll tweak the vertical perspective slider until the sides of the image are roughly straight. And then I'll tweak the Angle tool until the horizon looks straight too. I think that's about good, so I'll click OK. Alright, now all that's left is to crop the edges of the image out with the Crop tool. And I'll hit enter when I'm done, and I'll go ahead and save the image. Once we're saved, I can return to Lightroom and make some final adjustments to the photo. First, I'll enter the Develop module. Now, the first thing I like to do is bump up the vibrance and saturation all the way to 100. What this allows us to do is see how well our photo was white balanced, and lets us make minor tweaks to get it just right. I think this image needs to be a little bit bluer, so I'll lower the temperature slider just a bit. Basically, we want to look for the best combination of colors in our image. If the white balance is off, your image will usually look all blue or all yellow. 
Just tweak it so that there's a really good mix of different colors. Once you're set, you can double click on the vibrance and saturation labels to reset them to zero. Now that we have a nice neutral white balance, we can bump up the contrast a little bit. And I'll move down to the clarity slider to increase some of the punch of the photo. Don't go overboard on the clarity. A lot of newbies like to push it up to 100, but this usually makes the image look pretty fake. And we'll start to make some dark halos where the horizon meets the sky. I try to keep it a rule to not bump up clarity much past 50. Next is the curves adjustment. I like to pull up the far left point just a little bit and pull the shadows down to crush the blacks a little bit. Finally, I'll bring some contrast back to the image by pulling up the highlights. This is a small adjustment that you can make to give your digital images a more film-like look. It's actually similar to what a lot of film presets do. Now the last global change that we'll make is to bring some color back into the image. Now looking at this, I think the green air glow is just a little bit overwhelming, so I'll make one last tweak of the tint slider. Now that covers it for global adjustments, so we're ready to clean up the photo just a little bit more. Diana had her headlamp on while I was shooting photos, and it made this little sliver of light on the ground beside her. I think it's a distracting element in the photo, and it's something that I didn't notice until I got back from the shoot, so I'll remove it by selecting the Spot Removal tool, and I'll just use the bracket keys to make the brush a little bit bigger, and I'll paint out that sliver of light. Sometimes the Content Aware algorithm picks the wrong source, so I'll just drag it to the spot that I prefer. That looks pretty good now, so now I can click Done. Okay, now that we have that blemish removed, I think we're ready to crop the image. I wanted the shot to have a sort of Hasselblad-y feel, so I chose a 1 by 1 square aspect ratio for the final crop. And I think that just about covers it for post-processing. One of the cool things about Lightroom is that when you're done with a photograph, you can save all of your adjustments as a preset, by going over to the left toolbar and selecting the plus button to create a new preset. I usually keep the exposure unchecked so that it doesn't affect the brightness of the image. And I'll just give this one a name and select my lonely spec preset folder and then click create. So now if I just have a plain old photo, all I need to do is click the preset name to apply it to the image. I have a number of different presets here for different film looks and you can see that it's as easy as just clicking one to apply. Now looking at my previous edit, it looks like there's just one last tweak that I forgot to make, and that's a graduated filter. So let's go back to the image, and I'll select the graduated filter tool. And I've got it set to reduce the exposure by about a half a stop. Then I'll just click and drag the tool down to set the gradient, and you can see that we can just select this little dot to tweak the position of the filter. I think I like it just about there. And now I'll make some final tweaks to the settings of the filter. I think I like it a little bit brighter, and I want to add a last bit of pinkish tint to the sky. And let's make it just a notch cooler on the temperature. Alright, that looks good. One of the cool things about making this change is that we can actually update our preset to include the new changes. To do this, all I have to do is right click on the preset and select update with current settings. And you can see that in the dialog box, we're including local graduated filter adjustments. So now our preset includes the newly made graduated filter adjustment, and we can apply the preset to any photo just by clicking on it. All right, that just about does it. This technique requires a little bit more patience, but it can give us some great results. I use it both on my astrophotos and my daytime photography. So as always, I hope this video was helpful. If you want to see more astrophotography videos, please subscribe and check out all of our tutorials and gear reviews on LonelySpec.com. See ya!